Here we are in, um, in between Lido and, and Venice, and we're in front of the Lazzaretto Vecchio, which is a really uh, ancient island where the boats used to stop before entering the in Venice and uh, yeah and spend the, the quarantine here and uh, to me I'm really fond of this place because actually I grew up in a, in Lido and I've been you know I, I've seen this place daily and it's really is a quite a hidden part of the of the North Lagoon so I use this um, this kind of um, poles that are like um, positioned by the fishermen and, um, and to me, they're really interesting. I like this kind of uh, ephemeral architectures. So I decided to, to use them as a base, then to, to position all uh, you know, the materials that I collected in Peru. For the first time, I started to focus on actually on a um, personal history, family history, and uh, it starts from uh, the story of my father that like in 1963, when he was really young, had this really uh, interesting idea to uh, start a production of uh, artistic Murano glass in, uh, in Peru in Lima and so he decided to to leave uh, from Murano and uh, by boat he brought all the materials that he all the tools you know from the oven to the minerals and that's how he met my mother and then they came back so I decided uh, to after 50 years to remake this travel to Peru bring in uh, the raw glass which is this one this is uh, it's called Cotisso then I decided to, to bring it to Peru and to start this travel uh, starting from Lima, from Lima and arriving to, to the Amazon. And uh, in this trip I started to physically uh, mix the, the glass that was traveling with me with the materials I was finding uh, along the, the way, like from stones to uh, organic materials and, uh, and everything was... Uh, placed, so all these kind of uh, uh, interventions, sculptural interventions were made in the outdoor, so in the middle of the nature, from the desert to the selva. It's not like a trip only from Venice to Peru, but it's actually a circular travel, so everything that was, you know, that traveled with me in Peru now came back here in this studio, which is here in, in Lido. This project is about traveling, it's about moving from one place to another, it's about materials that actually travel from one continent to another. So I think the draft wood and all these also materials that have been shaped by the sea or by actually the, the action of traveling through you know, places we don't know. And I think it was really, that's why I decided to, to collect them and then to transform, transform them. I started to do the Academy of Belle Arti in Venice. I was really interested in, uh, in uh, painting and collage above all. And I started to approach photography just to, you know, to produce uh, the, all the, the um, visual material that I needed for the collage. And then I started also to, um, to work uh, quite young in the art department in, uh, in the cinema industry in Rome. Really, I really learned, uh, you know, all the, um, you know, the set design. I learned how to build the set and how to uh, to create like a tridimensional shape that has to be photographed by a really big scale. Because I work, you know, for Walt Disney, I work for uh, quite big productions. I bring all these experiences into my art process. At the end, it was, you know, it actually is a. Is a mix of different disciplines, you know, from set design, uh, painting, collage, and uh, and photography. Uh, photography was the only way to bring everything together. My first project has been Dostan Anatomy, 
it was uh, done in Dolston, in a um, neighborhood in the east part of London. Dolston was uh, changing really fast due to a gentrification process. The change of this neighborhood was actually happening in front of my house, in front of my studio, and the local market, Ridley Road, was actually the, the heart of this neighborhood, which is one of the most multicultural neighborhoods in London, uh, where different uh, communities managed to, to live and to work together. I started to collect the materials in the market. The book became the, the the place where I managed to bring together these different uh, languages from street photography, from the sculptural work that I did in my studio, to the portrait. Money Must Be Made, in a way, is a continuation. I went to Lagos and I discovered this uh, really interesting story in the middle of Lagos, where you have uh, um, the Balogun market. I call it like a gentrification in reverse, because in the Balogun market used to be a really small local market in this uh, part of the city, uh, which was actually a residential area where all the um, Western corporations used to have their offices and uh, were also international uh, banks and uh, and, you know, the market started to completely to grow without any control and to, to cover the, uh, this kind of residential area. So my, my project actually was divided. One was, you know, this kind of really chaotic uh, market life. Uh, and, uh, you know, inside the office there was this kind of really derelict and completely empty and uh, useless uh, offices spaces where you could just see the, the remains of the office life and everything was completely covered by this uh, Sarah scent. In the book I try to recreate exactly this, uh, this opposition, these two close but distant realities. I feel like an instinctive attraction to to color and um, I think maybe because it's really something really in a way uh, ephemera is linked to the, uh, the effect of light and is uh, you know, really is a perfect way to communicate the, the, the vital energy of life. So I and it's also really linked to my both to my Venetian and to my Peruvian origins because in this like both these two cultures colors have been always really a uh, protagonist like from the Venetian schools in painting to the Inca textile.